Right. Hello, everyone in person and via Zoom. Um, my name is, hi, come on in, Jessica Martinez. I'm a reference and instruction librarian and also the liaison to the College of Science. So if any of you are in a department in the sciences, I am your librarian. Today, Jalisa Doni, the liaison to the um, social sciences, is monitoring chat and is going to let me know if anything goes wrong via Zoom and to answer questions. So for Zoom participants, just put questions and concerns in the chat and she'll let me know. So first, a land acknowledgement. UI Moscow is located on the homelands of the Ninipu Nez Perce. We extend gratitude to the indigenous people that call this place home since time immemorial. UI recognizes that it is our academic responsibility to build relationships with the indigenous people to ensure integrity of tribal voices. So today we are going to talk about the 10 essential library skills to ACE graduate school. My hope with this workshop is that it will save you time and it will save you energy. Um, because it can be confusing trying to find and access library resources and I don't want that frustration for any of you. We're going to talk about how to access the library, knowing key resources for graduate students, crafting keywords, using Boolean, finding books, finding articles, discovering the secrets of interlibrary loan, connecting Google Scholar to the library, never writing a citation, man a citation from scratch again, and then managing citation managers. So first, how to access the library. Uh, some of you have already found our physical location. Um, you can look at the interactive map for those online if you haven't been here in person. Your Vandal card equals your library card. So that is how you check out books and your Vandal ID is how you log in online. You can access online resources both on and off campus. You don't have to be using campus Wi-Fi to use any of our online journals or eBooks. And Interlibrary Loan and Summit, which are free for you to use, are your friends. Never pay for an article. When you're looking for articles, a lot of the time, you know, you get to the publisher's website, it says, oh, you can have this $45. Don't do that. We will get it for you for free, and it usually just takes a couple days although it does take a couple days. So plan ahead. Don't do that the night before something's due. The library also has research assistants. There is a liaison librarian for every subject. If you go to the library website about and liaisons, and I'll um, oops, show you that when we're on the, the website later. It's also on the handout that will get passed around at the end of this. Amazing here in person. So you can get in touch with your liaison librarian. You can also get help from reference librarians. Um, I'm a reference librarian. We are um, at the library from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. in person at the information desk on the first floor of the library. We are also available um, 24 hours a day, seven days a week via chat. That's the librarian at the desk between nine and five. And then it's a librarian from a different university around the world the rest of the time. But we're all happy and can help you find and access um, different resources. If any of you are teaching a class um, and you assign your students to find something in the library, we are happy to come talk to your students about using the library um, and doing something kind of similar for this workshop today with your students. So a few key resources that I want all graduate students to know that you have access to. You all have um, access to the New York Times. You go to accessnyt.com to set up an account using your Vandal email. And um, you can access it online. You can download the app. Um, and that is a, a great free resource that, um, that the library provides. You get some you know, make sure you're up to, up to date on the news. We also have the Chronicle of Higher Education if you're interested in um, reading about some of the timely events 
in academia. Um, and for that one, I suggest just searching Chronicle of Higher Ed in the library catalog, which I'll go in more depth on how to do that later. Um, but that's how you access that one. We also have some streaming services. Uh, Canopy, Swank, and Avon are three different streaming services, kind of similar to like Hulu, Netflix, Amazon Prime. So there's different documentaries, different movies in each of them, but you have access to stream through all of them. And there's a lot of documentaries. There's a lot of um, art house films, independent films, and award-winning films. So a great resource there. And you can just search for any of those in the catalog or go um, to our streaming services page. So any questions about accessing the library or these, uh, this first set of key resources for grad school? Good? Chat? Good? Okay. So the biggest and most useful resource we have for you, though, is called ProQuest Dissertations and Theses. This is a huge database and um, it's managed by the company ProQuest since its name, but it is dissertations and theses from all over the world, all different subjects. Um, and this is where when you write your dissertation or thesis at the end of your grad school career, is your paper will get digitized and put in ProQuest dissertation and theses. So this gives you the ability to find papers that are written, um, that were written by other students who had your same advisor, other um, students who were in your same department, who wrote on the same topic. So I'm just gonna show you how to find and um, access ProQuest dissertations and theses in the library catalog. So here we are, library website, lib.uidaho.edu. And I tried a few different ways of like the easiest way to find ProQuest dissertation and theses. You can go to the database A to Z. You could click on this link. You could go here and go down to dissertations and theses. Is that under? This one, dissertations and theses full text. But the easiest way is if you just search PQDT. And that will take you to the database in the catalog. Then you can click into it. Keep going. This is where if you were off campus, it would ask you to sign in, you put in your Vandal ID and you'd get here. So here is ProQuest dissertation and thesis. So what you can do, basic search, you could just throw, throw whatever in, but under advanced search, there are a lot of really neat options. So let's say you are in the geology department at U of I, and you are interested in uh, reading some dissertations or theses that were um, written under the advisement of Leslie Baker, who was the department chair up until this year. So what you could do here is type in her name and you'll see that one of the options under here, like there's, you know, keywords and text and title, but one of them is advisor. So there's a lot of ways you can get pretty specific here. You can say advisor. And I'm also going to say that I want to make sure, you know, Leslie Baker, that's like, there could be more than one. So I'm going to go down here. So you could put advisor here or up here and change it. And then down here is university or institution. And you look up universities or institutions. Search Idaho, University of Idaho. That's, we have more than 4,000 dissertations and theses in this database. And then you search. And this looks like 
there's only she's only been an advisor for just one um this is a dissertation or thesis dissertation in 2018. But then what you can do, you can go back to your advanced search, say, well, I wonder what else she's done. And then you can go, well, I wonder what committees and look at everything that she's been on the committee for. And then um, Dr. Baker has been on the committee for eight different dissertations at University of Idaho. <clears throat> so, that's a way that you can search by advisor. This is useful just as you're looking for advisors if you don't have one yet, but if you also want to see examples of what you know other people in your same situation have written. You can also search by, I'm going to move this back to anywhere. I'm going to leave University of Idaho up and I'm going to search by a, um, Keyword, fire refugia, because we have so many forest fires. Um, and then you'll see that at the University of Idaho, there have been 46 papers written with some combination about fire and refugia, which are, if you're curious, the small unburned parts that are left over after fire. Um, so that is. Just a quick, um, a quick little one. You can also um, look things up by subjects and, and see, um, I mean, there's a lot of subjects that you can choose. Um, there's, there's a lot to play with here. I'm not gonna go more in depth, but I just wanted to let you know that this was a great way that you could search not only by subject, but also by advisor and university. Um, and you can also limit by the thesis or doctoral dissertation down here or a different language. So any questions about ProQuest dissertations and theses? Good. Um, okay, so someone just asked if you can look at the reporting, can you access theses from other universities outside the US? Oh, so the question is, can we um, access dissertations and theses from outside the United States. And um, yes, we can. Uh, let's see. Um, so I guess like right, like here, the first couple, there's like our house university in Denmark and oh dear, um, I'm not Abert. Oh shoot. Well, I, I'm that university in the United Kingdom. I think that's Welsh. I'm not gonna try. Um, but yes, we can. If they have partnered with ProQuest Dissertations and Theses, they'll be here. The, um, and if, um, so like even the University of Idaho, not all of our theses have been digitized. It's a lot of work to digitize like a 100, 200 page dissertation. And so uh, you've got a pretty good shot before like nine, like if you're looking for something written after like 1995, it'll be digitized. But before that, we can go find the print copy. We have several print copies in the library. And I am um, just going to make a broad statement that most libraries in the world will at least have a print copy that they will digitize for you if you find the record of a paper that you'd like to read. So that is something that you would use interlibrary loan uh, for um, if, if it's not in this database. Did that answer the question? Any other questions? Okay. okay. Oh, shoot. Oh, that was my demo. So finding library resources. So now we're gonna talk about developing keywords using the example of my dog, Beatrix. This is her not wanting me to read my Kindle. Uh, and she is a um, Pitbull Blue Healer mix. And so if I wanted to research what's going on with my dog, I would sit down and I'd think about all the different words 
that you could use to describe B. So she's a pit bull, but that also is American Pit Bull Terrier, American Staffordshire Terrier, American Bully, and Staffordshire Bull Terrier. And I got all of those from like Wikipedia searches and just like doing lots of searches and looking at all the different words that you could use to describe the same concept. For a blue healer, that's um, cattle dog or an Australian cattle dog, and dog can also be canine. This is especially important in the sciences with scientific names or writing out chemical names or, um, you know, all the various terms that could be used. So you really want, when you're creating a search, to think of all the different ways someone else could have thought about your research topic. Then after I've thought of some keywords, I'm going to think about some Boolean searching. Um, so Boolean searching is using specific commands to tell the database, um, including the library catalog, specifically what you are searching for using um, these uh, kind of like codes. So quotation mark um, means that the results will contain an exact phrase. So if I put quotation marks around American Pit Bull Terrier, it should keep those words together in that order. Um, quotation marks, a lot of databases now um, are trying to go a little bit more towards the natural language searching that you end up with in Google. And so sometimes it will, uh, ignore your quotation marks and it just wants to give you everything, but that is the idea. Um, and sometimes uh, there are different ways to play with the advanced search to get this. And I'm gonna show you that in a second. Um, more Boolean and is the results contain all the keywords and is a way to make your search smaller. Yes. Oh yeah, yes. Please take a photo, take a screenshot. Um, this is a good one to take a photo of. Um, so, and makes your, should make your results smaller and more specific, um, or makes your results larger because you're gonna get results for both dog and canine. Um, parentheses are how you can contain ideas. So you could make this search string really, really long. Like I've seen like 200 word long search strings that you can put in a database and get alerts for. So you get really specific um, results back and then you can get alerts sent to your email every time someone writes something on your topic. Not uh, will mean that the results exclude that keyword. So example for this is if you're re researching panda bears, you would put panda not express, um, but you don't wanna start out your search that way. That would only be if something, you keep getting a result back that you really don't wanna see anymore. So have that just like ready to go, but it's, it's not a good initial search strategy. And then uh, asterisks are wild cards. And what you can do is you can put an asterisk at the end of a word like behavior, and then you get everything. Um, it's kind of like just the root word. So in this example, you would get both behaviors and behavioral back. Um, this is great for some things, you know, like biology and um, a lot of scientific words. So you get all the root words, everything that comes from a root. So then we take what we've just done and okay, I'm gonna go back. So here's the library web page. And I'm going to go to advanced search, which brings me into the catalog and gives me just a little bit more space. So here I'm just leaving it as any field, but there are some more options here if you want things to be specific. And I'm going to put in American. American Pitbull Terrier, 
And you'll see that in our advanced search, we're going to help you create this Boolean. So I'm going to say and, and I'm going to use behavioral, or but I'm going to do it with an asterisk. Um, I'm going to leave this open to all material types, but you can limit it at the beginning. I'm okay with any language. And I'm okay with any year. Actually, let's see what happens in the last two years. That's interesting. We'll see if anything comes back. And then search. So there were 55 results. And you'll see that it that the library catalog took apart. It didn't it did not respect my quotation marks around American Pitbull Terrier. So what I can do is I can come back and I can change this and say instead of contains, I can say is exact and search again. Um, when you go into subject specific databases, um, which I'll show you here when we're looking for articles, they are all different. And so sometimes you might not get what you want. Did it not do it again? But um, you just like have to play with all of the settings because they're all different. So like um, PubMed doesn't really want you using Boolean. They've put a lot of effort into making it a natural language searching database um, because they want people to have, like anyone to have access to that. They don't want you to have to know how to do, you know, use specific tools to find things. But if you're going to use a database like Web of Science or um, like Hein Online, like those are like science and legal databases, then there you will probably want some of those Boolean. So they're all a little bit different. And um, I encourage you to reach out to your liaison librarian and have a conversation with them and, and talk about where do I, where's the best place to find help using this database? Like, what should I be doing? So then here you'll see some of these are open access. A lot of these are open access. Yeah, awesome. That's awesome. You can choose peer reviewed journals over here, different topics, different languages, different journals. Go to any year. Partial results. So here we've got full text online that you can um, change your availability to, and you can also change your research type to articles. And then you apply. So that way you don't get any books back. Um, if you were searching for books, you would get rid of that articles filter. And go down and um, you can see you can do a dissertations and theses, but you can also do book chapter or print books. And there's one print book. Maybe Adam's task, calling animals by name. Interesting. This here, uh, check request options, means that we don't have the book in the library, but you can get it through one of our partner libraries with, that's called um, the Orbis Cascade Alliance and Summit. And so all of these other libraries have a copy of this book and you can sign in and then just request it and it'll take a couple days for it to get shipped here from the other library. So right now we're searching for books at U of I that are in Summit as well as our e-resources. You can um, change what you're searching for in the catalog. So that's kind of quick, how to use the library catalog. Oh, but for books, I do want to show you how to actually find a book in the library. We'll just go really broad. So all 3 million books on dogs. So this is a book about dogs in the children's section of our library up on the third floor. 
And you'll see the call number here, Library of Congress classification is what we use at the library to organize our books. And um, PZ is gonna be up on the third floor of the library. If you are looking for maps, we have small print maps at the reference desk on the first floor of the library. You can also find maps here, location maps. And scroll down to the third floor and you'll see that the PZs are back here in the corner. So that's how you'd find a book at the library. You can also, if you're like, I don't have time, I don't have time to go find a book. I've got a you know, master's thesis to write. You can also sign in and then you can request the book and we'll go find it for you and email you when it's down at the information desk. You still have to come pick it up, but you don't have to go find it. Okay, any questions about finding articles or, or finding books and articles in the catalog? I'm gonna show you databases real quick. Good, makes sense. So if you are, when you're doing your searching, um, books, catalog, library catalog, that's how you find books. But for articles, um, you're probably going to be using a database. So databases A to Z, just like for the ProQuest dissertations and theses. And then when you're looking, I'd go to databases by title. And here you can look through all of them and you can sort them by subject. So, you know, if you're like, okay, I'm uh, doing, let's see, education curriculum and instruction is, we have a lot of databases about this. And um, you can kind of look through, read the descriptions and see what best suits your needs. Because then um, once you go into one, so like in this instance, We'll go to Eric, Education Resources Information Center. And this is a big one for education articles. Um, you'll see that a lot of these are hosted by the companies EBSCO and ProQuest. So a lot of these databases look really similar. Then you can put your search terms in um, from the keywords and the Boolean, um, however you've decided to craft that. And here, and in EBSCO databases, what's really neat is you can choose to find all my search terms. So you can just throw pit bull behavior, um, probably not in this database, but you know, you can throw your search terms, all of them in and, and just see what comes back. Or you can say, I would like to use Boolean so that you get those really specific results back. So if I, um, put in, I'm going to do find all my search terms. Um, triple legislation. Um, in search, that as opposed to the library catalog, which is really interdisciplinary, a lot of these articles will have a little bit more of an educational uh, perspective. Um, but also then this just came back with like legislation about anything. So when you're searching things, it, you know, you have to keep going. You'll often get frustrated. You just have to keep searching for things and, um, look for for other ways to do the same research. Um, I really like using these subject terms that are like down here because often the way I think about something is not the way that someone else has thought about something, especially the people that like put the subject headings in. So that helps me find results that are useful. So that's databases and how to find them. Okay, back to, okay, next is the secrets of interlibrary loan. So 
So I showed you. I showed you how to find get summit books in the catalog with interlibrary loan, you can also um, find them if you sign in and we don't have access to it interlibrary loan is an option in that same place. You can also get it by going to ILL on the homepage of the library website. Then you are taken to this page and you sign in using your Vandal ID, the same one that you use for your email and everything else. And it'll take you to this page. And then you choose article or whatever other, other resource type you're trying to get. And then you put all the information that you have in and request it. And you will get an email with a PDF or a link to a PDF in a couple of days. So that is interlibrary loan. There's some chats. Are there questions about that? No, okay. Yeah. Oh, it's um, ILL is what it is on the library website. That's the shorthand we use for interlibrary loan. And we'll get books, music, DVDs, articles. Um, try it. The people in ILL are really nice. And if, it, if we can't get it for you, they will just email you. Um, there's really, there's no harm in asking. Please ask. Most of the time we can get it. So next, I'm going to show you how to connect Google Scholar to the library. So if we go to Google Scholar, you've been here. Everyone has used Google Scholar, I think. Um, what you do is you go up to the little hamburger, go to settings, and then library links. Since we're on campus, all of the University of Idaho ones are automatically selected. So if you are using Google Scholar on campus, you will automatically be connected to everything that the library has access to. If you are off campus though, that is not the case. So what you'll do is you'll search Idaho and you'll see all of the options for different Idaho universities. And the, um, you'll just wanna select University of Idaho, these, these two that are here. And then if you're signed in, you'll save it. And if you're not signed in, you can set this up and then it'll just be good for that one you know, time you're on that browser. So then when you are on Google Scholar, um, uh, we'll do, ooh, we'll do Fire Refugia again. Oh, Boreal, that's fun, okay. So then, um, if this is your search, what you'll see here is we've got the publisher website PDFs, but then you also have these University of Idaho Get It links. So in this instance, you could get it through the publisher, but you can also get it through the University of Idaho library. And I'm going to request that you do get it through the library because we determine which journals we subscribe to based on how much they are used. So if you're going to read an article, read it with us so that we know you did it and we'll keep subscribing to that. So that was an open access journal, hence why the PDF was online. But then when you click University of Idaho, get it, it takes us back and then you just click through to the publisher website. Oh, and then we learned about climate change, refugia in boreal in North America. So that is connecting Google Scholar to the library. Um, Google Scholar is great for doing, um, I mean, you're just really throwing a wide net out there. Like if you're having trouble in a finding 
something <laughs> usually there if it's nowhere else. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so if you are on Google Scholar, did it, and we're on campus. So, ah. So once we're here, it's just um, clicking. Oh, it didn't go away. A full view and it disappeared. It was saying University of Idaho get it and now it's not. And I don't know why. Yeah. Am I already in this? I don't know why it's not working. Or why it doesn't look the same as it did a second ago. It will usually look the way it looks the first time. I think maybe it already like can we just be skipping that now? I don't cookies on the internet. Uh, probably that's my explanation for that um but yeah university of idaho get it is how you go through the library catalog to, to get our copy of an article so oh next we are going to do never create a citation from scratch again um don't do it don't create a citation from scratch it's horrible um Nothing is less fun than that. So I have a couple resources to show you for that. The first is research guides. So under research guides, you will actually find lots of wonderful resources. Um, the various liaison librarians have put together research guides for all the subjects. So let's say, ooh, we'll do one of Jalisa's maybe. So if you are, studying journalism and mass media. This is your um, research guide. And there are suggestions of newspaper databases and um, other library resources that are useful to you. There's also on all research guides, this site sources page, which will take you to um, this page that has been created that has the citation style information for all the main citation styles, as well as the writing center, citation management system links, and citation tools. My favorite one to use is Zotero Biv. That if you are um, on Zotero Biv and you can be, uh, that you can do a, um, you can just put a URL or an ISBN in here and it will create a citation for you and that you don't have to make it from scratch. I should have kept my forest fire refugia thing open. Fire, air now, oh, can you cite that? I don't know, let's try it. It's like, how's the air quality today? I don't know if this will work. Oh yeah, I don't know. I mean, close enough. Uh, fire and smoke map, no date, retrieved September 7th from fire, you know, dot gov. Which gets you like in the ballpark of a correct citation for that government website. You will, of course, always want to check with an actual handbook and if you're citing something um, very esoteric, uh, you'll, you'll definitely need to pull those handbooks, which we have all of the newest handbooks uh, um, in the reference collection on the first floor of the library. So citation style in the research guides and Zotero bib um, is the, the, I think it's the best one. It doesn't have ads on it. A lot of the citation um, generators from the past now have a lot of ads on them. And then my, uh, very last um, thing for today is um, citation managers. So Zotero, the company that makes, Zot that makes Zotero bib that I just showed you, also has a citation manager um, called Zotero. And a citation manager is software that you can use to 
save and organize all of the resources that you find in your research. So um, you would be able to uh, store all your PDFs in Zotero. You're able to just, it'll create all your citations automatically and it will create a bibliography for you um, at the end of your research that you can insert into your paper. Uh, we are doing a citation management. Um, we're doing some videos on citation managers and we're having a, uh, like an open office session for any questions. And that's the last graduate student essentials workshop. So this is just a teaser for using a citation manager. It is a great idea. It will save you a lot of time and um, it will make your life easier. So any questions about citation generators? Yeah. Yes, um, the question was if undergrad students could access that too. And absolutely. Um, Zotero is free. We do. Where is our? On the um, research guide, if you go down to citing citing sources as a whole research guide, there's the the citing sources. There's also one on citation management software. I'm just going to go back to this one that I, this is the one that is connected to all the other research guides. The three that we suggest are Zotero, EndNote, Web, and Mendeley because there is a free version of all of these. So anyone can access citation managers. Um, yes. Ooh, the question is, do we have any plagiarism checker available via the library? And my response to that is no. Do you know of one? Oh, there is one through the College of Graduate Studies. Okay. Okay, they are ironing out, ironing out the details, but if you reach out to the College of Graduate Studies, they will help you with the plagiarism checker. That's really cool. Yeah, good news. And then one more question. Yeah. Um, will the library help if we need to access a student database? Maybe something like you don't have. Um, ooh, like you need to act. Okay, the question is, will the library help, um, help if we need to access a paid database that we do not have access to? Um, interlibrary loan will get you an article from any database, but if you need a database like that has data, um some sometimes we can get those um usually we cannot but we can help you find a library that does have access to that database and um, you might have to drive a little ways but but we've definitely helped people find that and have sent people to wsu sometimes has databases that we don't have especially when it comes to like like data things like uh, business data. And uh, I know that I've helped connect someone with the uh, Coeur d'Alene Public Library because they had a database that like nobody else in the area had and they had it. And so the, I thought it was a professor drove up to use the database there. So we'll help you find it even if we can't give you money to access it. Any other questions? Oh, yes. Okay. Email cog. Okay. So then at the end here, there is um this is the first graduate student essentials. Um hopefully just a quick overview of some of the things available to you at the library. Um there is also going to be journal publishing next week. Like, what do you do if you want to publish a journal or publish in a journal? There's going to be um, one on story maps and ArcGIS, one on data management, and then October 5th, our citation management office hours. And you can see all of the workshops at the library just on our homepage 
here is you can see all the upcoming events. So six questions you need to ask before publishing a journal article would be next Tuesday. And um, there's also a handout that has um, a lot of the information that I talked about today. So you don't have to remember all of it off the top of your head. And there's a version Jaleesa sharing in the chat that hopefully maybe can be shared somewhere else because that's all hyperlinked so that you can just get to the most useful page quickly. Um, there's also an assessment link that Jaleesa is sending out in chat. And if I could prevail upon everyone in person to take a moment to fill this out here, I would greatly appreciate it. But that is all that I have. Um, thank you for coming and please let us know if you have any questions. Um, we are nice, we like to help and we're here to help. So thank you.